So here's the file itself. Kind of want to go through piece by piece and just go with what each track is, but it starts out like this. All right, so that's how it begins. So this whole thing was recorded in Ardour, but originally when I first started it, it was a drum idea that I had. And the drum idea, I used a program called Hydrogen. And then laid down onto this track. And then along with the drum beat, it went like this. Then I kind of tried to figure out, do I want this to be the vocal line or do I want it to be a guitar line? Ended up not being either. It ended up being the standalone MIDI, which was this lead line that comes in in the beginning. That's the way it stayed for quite some time. Didn't really do anything with it. Then I added this MIDI bass line to it. And that's actually just kind of like a really basic sort of synthesizer bass sound. Good tone on it, though. It's just that it sounds like a fake synthesizer bass. So Cliff, our bass player, he has this bass ukulele with nylon strings on it, and ended up making this line right here. That sounds cool. That's super deep, too. That was the thing. It, was, it, it kept the tone. It cut through. So with everything, it was very... So we got all those elements. That's, ba that's the basic structure of the song. There wasn't much added. I decided I wanted to mess around with lyrics. I kind of battled with these for a little while. I sat right here in this actual spot that we're sitting on right now, and I just kind of played the song and, and sang directly into this right here. I ended up adding lyrics, which went... Just how it began is still vague what I want. And then I'd taken the guitar line out is still the or the same. keyboard line out. I know that. This thing right up here at the top is when Cliff was doing the bass line, he had an idea that he wanted to mess around with. And he wrote a MIDI part that is this stuff right here. So he created this kind of creepy chime thing that ended up working out. He didn't know if I'd like it or not. He was just kind of testing out MIDI stuff. And I really dug it, so we kept it in. So now that's part of the song. It only comes in during the vocal parts. Just how it began is still vague. What I want. The song had verses. I didn't quite know what to do with the chorus yet. And I didn't necessarily like the basic loop beat that I had for drums. And Rob was trying to think of some stuff, and one time we were on a video call, uh, one of our band practice video calls, where we were all just talking over our private Facebook group, and he was playing his drums, and we were listening to it, and he kind of did this little shuffle thing, and loved it, had him record it, and created... <laughs> that, oddly enough, went with the background. And so I was going to get rid of... I was going to get rid of the uh, the loop beat because I was like, oh, I really like his beat. But when I got rid of it, it didn't sound right anymore. So let me show you what I mean. Here it is without the loop beat that I had created. It changes the song entirely. So when I put it back in... It just, it bobs a lot more. So that's where that was. This is where we left it. And then finally, I came up with the idea for the course. So I 
I created this extra line right here. I took the lyric so long, copied that, move it to another channel, and then added all these effects to it. I created a stereo echo using a tap echo sort of crazifier and then compress the living heck out of it so that it would be really loud and that it would echo longer because the attack on it would be louder. And that's basically how I came up with the part that goes. So that's, that's the basic structure of this one. It's a lot simpler than the last one that we did.